Now let me show you a demo with a much larger data set. Uh, this data set we used for 2019 visualization contest. In the fall 2019, we had a visualization contest where we put this data set on our clusters. Uh, so this data set was kindly provided by uh, Joshua Brinkenhoff, uh, faculty from the University of uh, British Columbia in Okanagan. And this data set is an open form simulation of airflow around an airfoil. And this is a very large numerical simulation. It was uh, stored on a structured mesh and then loading a single time step from this uh, three-dimensional uh, internal mesh requires about 200 gigabytes of physical memory. So the data is uh, sitting in CETA in this directory. In order to read this data set, I actually need to use a lot more CPU cores. I'm going to give you a demo where I will try to load this data set on 128 CETA cores. Let me copy uh, the location of this data set. Uh, let me open my shell. So here again, I'm going to start uh, Tmax uh, on my local uh, computer because I want to be able to split uh, this shell into two uh, panes, left and right, using Tmax, uh, like that. All right, here I'm going to log into CETA. And then I will CD into this directory. So let's check the data set uh, using the terminal. And here it is. And the entire data set is huge. So the simulation was run on 512 processor. And then each processor uh, produced its own output directory. So for example, on processor uh, 511, uh, we have this output at each time step. And then uh, let's do uh, this time step 14.88308. Uh, and these are the files. Uh, they're actually uh, gzipped files, but Paraview can read these uh, gzipped files. So the entire data set is huge. Uh, let me now go to my home directory. And in my home, I'm going to create a symbolic link pointing to this directory. So I'm going to uh, say airfoil. And now if I do ls minus l, I grab for airfoil you will see there is a symbolic link in my home directory and that points to these uh, simulation data. Uh, now uh, let me start an interactive job on CETA and let me go to the slides. So here in the slides, I actually tell the exact steps uh, that you need to follow uh, to visualize the data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is let me CD into scratch directory because if you remember on CETA, I can really uh, start an interactive job from the home directory. So I need to CD into some other file system, for example, Scratch. So here I CD it into Scratch. I'm going to start the interactive job. So I'm going to be asking, let me just copy and paste this. I'm going to be asking for 128 CPU cores, 60 minutes maximum runtime, 3600 megabytes of memory per CPU. And then uh, it is complaining because I have multiple allocations. So I need to supply the allocation name with a dash dash account. I'm going to be using this one. So let me submit this job and uh, see if it starts right away or I have to wait. And the nodes are available. So my job has started. And in fact, I can here type the Sloan environment variable. So I can check for, uh, for example, the list of nodes that are running my job. These are the nodes that were allocated to my job. And I can print out the number of uh, processes. So and prox will print out the number of uh, processes. I'll be using 128 MPI tasks inside my job. Let me now go back to the slides. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to uh, load Paraview 5.5 off-screen module inside the interactive job. I'm going to load the module. And then I'm going to run this command, mpi run minus mp128 on PV server. So I'm starting the parallel Paraview server on 128 cores. It is, uh, it's been started. It's accepting connection on node 774 on port 111. So now I have to organize SSH port forwarding. Let me uh, copy and paste this command. So in here, in the right window, the right pane, 
on my local laptop, I'm going to say 774, connect from uh, port 11111 on my laptop uh, to uh, port 1111 on the node 774 on CETA. Organizing SSH port forwarding, done. Now I'm starting Paraview 5.5 on my laptop. And now let me resize it, or let me actually move it slightly. So uh, here I'm gonna connect to local host, connect. And as you can see, client is connected. The client server communication is established. Let's just wait a couple of seconds. All right, here we go. Let me resize this. And then I'm gonna go to file open. And then because in my home directory, I created the symbolic link. So if I go to, let's see, browse them off. No, I'll need to go to home. And then, okay, here is home actually, right here. And then here I have the symbolic link called airfoil, which points to the uh, simulation directory. I'm gonna open this data and I will set the case type to the composed. So I will need to open this file, case.foam. I'm gonna say, okay. And then in the properties case type, I'm gonna say decomposed. So decompose means that each processor in the simulation wrote its own directory. So let me hit apply. And now it's loading a very large simulation. So it's tens of gigabytes per time step. And it's loading it using parallel IO on 128 processes. And here we go. The simulation was loaded. And if you want to get information about the data set, you can click on the information tab and it will give you information about the variables and these are various time steps, etc. Let me click back on properties. And now I'm going to apply the calculator filter. So I'm going to compute a new variable called speed. That is the magnitude of velocity. Click on calculator. And then I'm going to be computing new variable called speed. Uh, that is the magnitude of velocity. So it's magnitude of the velocity vector, the u vector, right here. Say apply. And it's going to be computed on the same discretization as the existing variables, the unstructured mesh. So here we go. Now it's showing uh, this uh, speed, the magnitude of velocity. Uh, let me apply a cone to filter at speed equal 0 0.8. I'm going to say a cone to filter and then speed, and then the value is 0 0.8. Hit apply. Here we go. Let me uh, zoom in on this object by clicking on these uh, orientation buttons, predefined orientation buttons, so something like that. And as you can see, the visualization is interactive. So I'm using 128 processes on CETA and I'm doing it live and it's fairly responsive. So it takes about maybe a second to render each frame, maybe a couple of seconds to render each frame. Let me color this by the Y component of the vorticity vector. So uh, I'm actually hit apply again. And then I'm coloring by vorticity, Y component of vorticity. So here we go. Now let's load the uh, rainbow desaturated color map. So I'm gonna go to edit color map and then rainbow desaturated. All right, it is the one with many colors. Hit apply. Let me close this window. Close this guy. And finally, we're gonna save the image as PNG. So I'm gonna go to file, save screenshot. And then into desktop, I'm gonna say, uh, we're saving into a file called airfoil.png. Accept the defaults, the image resolution and the compression ratio for the PNG image. And here we go. So we just save the image as a local file on our computer. And then what I suggest in these slides, you can follow all these steps and make sure that when you do visualization at the very beginning, you click tools, uh, start trace after you establish the client server communication, and then you click tools, stop trace. 
And then when you do this, when you stop the trace, it will show you the script that you can save as a file, for example, airflow.py, and it will be a local file saved on the computer. You can edit it locally in a text editor, and then you can upload the script to the cluster. On the cluster, you can actually run it as a Perl interactive job without launching the GUI. So uh, here's your script, airflow.py, and uh, you can start an interactive job and try to run the script with a pvbatch. So pvbatch is the command to run a perfect Python script from the command line. This way, you're going to be running this script uh, on 128 cores on CEDA, and then you debug the script. And then you can actually write a Slurm job submission script. And then you can try submitting the script as an off-screen, non-interactive batch job, right? So when you run this job, it will just run on a regular compute node, not on one of the interactive nodes.